gal, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are doing a Mediterranean meal prep, summer edition, lunchtime inspired. Does that mean you only have to eat these recipes for lunch? Absolutely not. They can be for dinner, for breakfast, for a snack, whatever your heart desires. Mediterranean meal prep staples. We're making four different staples that can be used so many ways. That is why I love meal prep. Meal prep is not about eating chicken and rice and broccoli. Um, it is about having a dish prepared that will last three to four days that you can use in so many different ways to have such yummy, delicious, satisfying Mediterranean diet meals throughout the week and weekend and whenever you want. So that is what we're doing today. We're going to do a Mediterranean meal prep. So let's hop right into our first recipe. Okay, so we are starting off with the thing that is going to take the longest in order to have a super efficient and easy meal prep experience. Um, so I am starting off with the protein. So today I am using chicken breasts, you guys. I try to get creative as possible, but to be honest, it is one of the easiest proteins to work with. I love chicken, it's so versatile, it goes with so many different things, but um, you know, you can use whatever protein source you love the most. But today we're gonna be using chicken, and I'm gonna go ahead and marinate it and develop a bunch of flavors because we don't want anything bland. <laughs> we want all the flavor possible. And today I'm working with one of my favorite marinades of all time, so this is a yogurt marinade. So if you want the most juicy, flavorful, chicken yogurt marinade is the way to go whole milk yogurt is the key we want that fat we want that flavor it's you know chicken has barely any fat at all so the whole milk yogurt really really does well here and then the layers of spices just to bring this home of course i'm highlighting sumac here you guys know how much i love the spice sumac it's a very lemony spice but you can use you know, an array of spices, clean out your spice cabinet, just get the flavors going. About fourth a cup of yogurt. You don't want too much because all the excess will just end up being wasted, but you want enough to definitely cover this chicken. I dolloped the yogurt in here, and this is why I also absolutely love this yogurt marinade. Put a lid on it, and now you have a, an amazing dip. Dip some pita chips in here, dip some carrots, cucumbers, jicama. You can spread this on sandwiches, kind of like a mayo aioli replacement. So here you have a two-in-one, which you guys know I love to give as much purpose as I can to everything that I make because I love to cook, but I also don't want to spend my life in the kitchen. <laughs> I have the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick toss. All right, so the chicken is fully coated in a nice layer of this yogurt sauce. And another reason why a yogurt marinade is so good, especially during the summer, it is perfection on a grill. But right now, I'm just gonna probably do it in the pan today, later, once this is marinated. So this needs to marinate for a while. The acid in the yogurt, the yogurt has the tendency to really break down and make the chicken super tender, super moist, super juicy. So it needs a really good time to do that and get nice and marinated, maybe three, four hours. Then I'm gonna bring it out and let it sit for 30 minutes to come to room, as closest to room temperature as you want. That might sound a little freaky, bringing um, a meat up to room temperature, but that way you get it really well and evenly cooked. You can get a really good sear on it. And so those are some tips. But anyways, I'm gonna pop this into the fridge, let it do its thing while we make everything else. The second recipe that is going to take the longest in this little meal prep series is our delicious zucchini tarts or quiches. So I think quiche is probably one of the most perfect lunches slash breakfast, or even dinner, like I said. In my opinion, I absolutely love how it has that buttery, nice wholesome crust, a very, very protein-packed, delicious filling, and it's just so satisfying. A little side salad and you're good to go. So I have prepped a bunch of, not a bunch, just a few tiny, personalized little quiche um, tartlets adorable. You can find these in your freezer section at almost all grocery stores, or you can make a quick pastry crust. I have made pastry crust before in a few past videos, so I will leave a recipe down below for a super simple pastry crust. It's usually three ingredients, flour, salt, and butter. So I have them already pre-baked, so that means they're not golden brown by any means. They're just barely baked. So they can go in for the second round once we make this lovely zucchini egg mixture. So I'm gonna put these off to the side and we are gonna work on the filling for our zucchini tarts, our zucchini quiches. So I'm calling this more of a tart than a quiche because I'm going to be using, once again, <laughs> some Greek yogurt. Um, you can use creme fraiche if you want to. I just didn't think about grabbing it at the grocery store the other day 
could use ricotta. You've probably heard me say ricotta so much, you were sick of hearing that word because I use it in so many recipes. So I opted out from using ricotta and then I didn't grab creme fraiche, but you could also use some whole milk Greek yogurt. The point is to be using whole milk. You want that fat. It satisfies you. It just keeps you fuller, more full for longer. It's so good for us to have those whole fats. So. Let us begin with this filling. Stop talking, Caroline. <laughs> so I'm using large eggs for this filling. Next, I'm going in with about a fourth a cup to a third a cup of some whole milk yogurt. And then next, we're going in with a tablespoon of delicious, beautiful Mediterranean liquid gold, extra virgin olive oil, a pinch of some freshly cracked pepper, as well as some salt and lastly the lovely cheesy aspect we're gonna go in with about a fourth a cup to a third a cup equal parts whole milk yogurt to parmigiano just to add even more saltiness it'll help get a nice golden brown top and we're just gonna whisk that all together I'm gonna throw this off to the side out of frame we're gonna pull out the cutting board and now let's prep the zucchini. Because we are not cooking the zucchini beforehand, I'm going to cut it as literally paper thin as possible. So just take your time. You could use a mandolin for this um, or a vegetable peeler. That would also work as well. So I'm just cutting some super thin rounds. So I have the zucchini all cut up here. It is so super duper paper thin i mean i don't even think you guys can see like it is super duper thin and ready to go so i have the zucchini prepped and ready and next we need our herbs so i'm gonna go in with an onion aspect since we're not using like any shallots or any onions i love chives they're such a delicate onion flavor and they're delicious during summertime and you know if it's gonna be a summer meal it has to bring on the herbs I mean, if it's gonna be a Caroline recipe, it has to bring on the herbs, but I just love fresh herbs, especially, especially during the summertime. So I'm just gonna chop off the ends, get rid of those. And similar to green onions, the flavor is definitely concentrated at the bottom. So I'm just going to focus on kind of mincing them just like this, making little tiny rounds as a child i was i was very, i mean i am still very weird but i was a very weird child growing up i would walk out to my mom's herb garden and just eat straight chives i know so weird i think it helped build my immune system you know they weren't washed or anything so when you pick things off of the plant it just tastes unreal i don't know that's my opinion <laughs> yeah i have about a tablespoon of chives done and now i need about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of fresh thyme. Thyme complements eggs as well as chives. Um, eggs and zucchini very, very well. It's one of my favorite herbs as well. It's just kind of annoying to pick at. You kind of have, have to have the patience and the time to deal with thyme because you kind of pull, similar to rosemary, I don't know if you guys can see, and just kind of pull downwards and you will get kind of just an empty stem like this. And now I'm just giving it a super rough chop because it's already so tiny. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the bring back the egg mixture and I'm gonna drop the herbs that smell unreal straight into the egg mixture. Just give it a nice quick whisk. All right, back to mic audio. I am, I'm so sorry. Literally, I think I'm having terrible luck. Almost all of my cooking videos recently have been cutting in and out with the mic. I'm so sorry about that. I hopefully the audio wasn't that bad that we just did. Egg mixture is complete. Zucchini is sliced very thin. We need one more ingredient to go into the egg mixture, which is a minced clove of garlic. So I'm just smashing it, taking off the peel, looking on the inside to see if there is a yellow center. Take that out because it's bitter and we don't really want that mixed in. I'm gonna go ahead and press it. You could mince it with a knife. I just love a nice garlic press straight into the egg mixture. Oven is ready. So just gonna stir in the fresh garlic. So into to my tart shell. I'm gonna keep this stirred because the herbs like to float to the top and I want an even amount of herbs. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this. I'm only going in about two thirds of the way up with this egg mixture. 
because I have to layer in, we're going to be layering in the zucchini. So I'm just going to lightly press in the zucchini, make a nice cute little ring all around just like this. So once you have poured the egg mixture into the tart shells, I'm going to take the zucchini and make a nice little spiral on the top of the tart shell. You can add the zucchini into the egg mixture. This just makes a little bit more pretty of a design. <laughs> so I have the zucchini lightly on top of the egg mixture, and I'm just gonna pour a little bit on top just so it's not super dry. And just for a little bit extra beautiful golden brown goodness, I'm going to sprinkle ever so lightly a little bit of parmigiano on top just to make sure we get a lovely golden brown crust. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into the oven. I have preheated it to 350 degrees. They're gonna go in there until they're golden brown on top. And so because I have little mini tart shells, they're probably only gonna take 10 to 12 minutes. That's the beautiful thing about this recipe is they take no time at all. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven. So I pulled the quiches out of the oven and as they were cooking, I prepped the next thing that we are making. So usually to go with the protein, I always make some kind of grains. You guys have seen that a lot. I'll make like quinoa or you know, something like farro, couscous. I love grains. Grains are super amazing, so good for us and they just usually complete a dish. Today I'm not using grains <laughs> to go with the chicken. I feel like something delicious is always roasted potatoes. Um, the oven is on, might as well use it. It's another way to get a vegetable in. It is an amazing, amazing carb source and it's just something simpler and lighter and now I don't have to get a pot out and use all these other ingredients. I can just chop up another vegetable since the oven's already on. So today I'm roasting my favorite potato. Not everyone loves these, I love them they're japanese sweet potato they have an amazing chewy texture use your favorite pot potato whether that's um, sweet potatoes you know golden potatoes so i have lined a baking sheet with parchment paper because we don't want any sticking and because i want to make sure that these are also super crispy and it just saves my life when cleaning up so i'm laying the potatoes out very evenly because you don't want them touching if they touch they won't get as crispy they won't cook as evenly just laying them out i cut mine into like fries but you can cut yours into regular shapes, whatever, however you like your potatoes. And the other reason why I'm choosing potatoes today is you're gonna see one of the next recipes we make is a sauce slash dip. So we already have that yogurt dip that I talked about that we can use. And then I also have another sauce that we're going to be making. And so I wanted something to be able to like dip in to that sauce and enjoy that sauce. So I thought fries would be delicious. I'm going to spray them with some avocado oil and then just flip them over. I want really, really, really crispy potatoes and avocado oil does the job. Avocado oil can go at a really high heat. We're cranking up the oven from 350 from how we baked the quiches to 450. I want super, super, super crispy, as crispy as we can get potatoes. So olive oil or avocado oil does the trick. Also in the air fryer, this is a great hack as well. It's to use avocado oil. Then I'm going in with oregano. It's summertime. I love the flavor of oregano, but if you want to do the classic rosemary, no one is stopping you. And potatoes need a lot of salt. I'm going to go ahead and toss these all around. Make sure that there's oregano on every single side of these potatoes. So the potatoes are perfect. They are ready to go and get into the oven. So I'm going to get them in the oven at 450 and then we're going to move on to the next recipe. Next, we're going to move on to the sauce that I was talking about. So because it's summertime, when I make sauces, I make them a little bit more thin to use as a pasta sauce over protein, over veggies, and also to use as a dip. During the fall and winter, I tend to make my sauces a little bit more thick because that way I can use it as a soup. So that's kind of how my brain works when it comes to meal prepping this portion of the your meal prep menu. So when it comes to like building a meal prep menu, what I think about always is what is my protein source? What is my kind of carb source, my whole grain source? Where am I getting those? Um, what is the sauce that's gonna pull everything together? So we have both the yogurt dip slash sauce and we're going to be making this sauce. And then what is the kind of fresh zingy element that you can elevate like a basic bowl of greens. What is the, the, the kind of the fresh vegetable element? So we will get to that 
lastly. And then of course we also have the quiches. So to the blender, a super quick, simple sauce. I'm kind of making a riff off of hummus. So instead of garbanzo beans, I have some delicious red lentils already prepped here. One cup of dried lentils makes about, I think two and a half cups. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the blender. So you can get your lentils canned or just prep them in advance. Lentils are full of fiber, protein, an amazing source of just deliciousness. So I also want to make sure that my recipes are for everybody. So this is going to be a very plant-based recipe. So this sauce can be used on top of chickpea pasta for a very high protein dish. You could also use this sauce on top of some seared tofu, on top of rice and maybe edamame or tempeh. Kind of this sauce is a great plant-based sauce to elevate your plant-based dishes if you are plant-based. So I always want to be aware of whatever way you're following the Mediterranean diet. Switching out the garbanzo beans for some sweet red lentils or in my opinion yellow lentils. <laughs> I'm just going to pop one very large garlic clove into the blender. I'm going to go in with a fourth a cup of extra virgin olive oil, and then a fourth a cup of tahini. Tahini is essential in hummus, and it just adds some creaminess, some nuttiness. It's just so, so good in hummus. And of course, a little bit of lemon. Of course, the zest queen needs to use some lemon. A little bit of salt. And now for how I'm kind of literally spicing up this kind of sauce. I just love the smoky flavor. I'm going in with a lot of smoked paprika. It is gonna make a beautiful color. It is gonna add that smokiness. Paprika is also a little bit sweet, which complements the sweet lentils as well. And because I don't want just an overpowering paprika taste, I'm going to add in some dimensions of more flavor. So I'm going in with, other than just smoked paprika, all the spices that would really complement the flavors that we're working with, which is, oh, are we out of turmeric? Oh no, here's the other jar, okay. Anyways, allspice, you can't really taste it. You would never think to use it maybe in something savory, but it's just mm. a little bit of coriander, a little bit of cumin, black pepper, of course. And lastly, a pinch of cayenne. I definitely am not a spice girl, so I can't handle red pepper flakes, I can't handle chili oil or any of that. I'm no fun when it comes to like spicy, hot spices. But if you like hot spices, add them in wherever you see fit. I usually don't use them. And then a little splash of sumac. That's optional. I know it's not a very popular spice. So I'm gonna pop the lid on and blend this all up. The sauce has been blended to per perfection. It is a beautiful yellow color. So like I said, this is a sauce, a dip, all the above. I kept it super thick. Actually, let's use a different container. I'm switching to these mini jars because that's all I have right now. But anyways, so it's like the perfect consistency where I'm, I'm, I can use it as a dip, like I'm saying. I can thin it out. You could thin it out with a little bit of water or a little bit of olive oil and make a perfect like drizzling sauce for on top of like meats and veggies. You could drizzle it on top of salads. I am also going to use this a lot for pasta, especially with some veggies, with some protein. I love, love, love this dip, sauce, all the above. And these fries go so well with it. We're pretty much almost done here. We have one more recipe to make. We're gonna cook off the chicken and then call it a meal prep. For, I pulled out the chicken while we make our final recipe to give it about 10, 15 minutes to come closer to room temperature, like I had mentioned earlier, so it can cook more evenly. For our final recipe, the fresh component, the vegetable component, um, the flavor, another flavor, full, very, very flavorful component because everything we meal prep, we wanna have a ton of flavor to add to things that have no flavor that take you know the least amount of time. Anyways, we are going to be making a olive tomato, um, like a really fresh olive tomato tapenade or salad, I guess. Kind of just a little like kind of fresh topping. So I have some tiny little cherry tomatoes here that I have them in heirloom because I love those colors. Tomatoes are the one of my probably most favorite vegetables during the summertime. Like going to cube them into little tiny bite-sized pieces. You want it pretty small. And then this way, this kind of olive tapenade salad mixture thing, you can add it to just a bed of fresh greens and it dresses it, it adds more flavor, it adds variety to like a simple salad. You can top it on top of any of your proteins that you've prepped, whether it's a chicken, a steak, some shrimp, some tofu, whatever you have prepped, you could throw it on some toast 
for lunch, like maybe smear on some, you know, some ricotta or some kind of cheese on the bottom of the toast and then dollop it maybe with some or even use like a slice of mozzarella and then add a little bit of this tomato. Like this is, this is a similar kind of uh, concept of bruschetta, basically. Basically, I was inspired by bruschetta, which is oh, my favorite. My mom used to make the best bruschetta growing up. I think I say that in every video. My mom made the best. My mom was the best ever, especially growing up. She made the best family dinners and we had so much bruschetta in the summer on the grill and she would make the bread, rub it with garlic, drizzle it with olive oil and top it with tomatoes. It was the bomb. So I'm kind of just elevating it a lot tonight, today, just adding flavors to it that, you know, just bring it up a whole other level. So I have the tomatoes all diced very nicely. Next, I'm gonna go in with the best olives in the world. You guys already know it, Castel Veltrano olives. Mm, they just hit different. So again, I'm having them, quartering them, and then eighthing them to make them the exact same size. You want them the exact same size, if not maybe smaller. Also, because I am such a crazy in love olive girl, I'm adding equal parts olives to tomatoes. You could add maybe a fourth of olive, like a half of olives compared to tomatoes kind of ratio, two to one. I like one to one, honestly. Next for the flavoring components, I'm gonna go in with about a third of a lemon, not too much. Um, a little trick with cutting lemons, if you're only using a half or a third, cutting them down the side like this, so not right in the middle, but on the side, avoiding the center area where all the seeds are, you just avoid all the seeds and having to deal with any of that. So I'm just gonna squeeze in some lemon juice for a little bit of acidity, acidity, a little bit of acidity, <laughs> and then just a little crack of salt. Obviously the olives are very salty, but, and then some freshly cracked pepper. Cannot make bruschetta tomatoes without some garlic. So I'm going in with about probably a small garlic clove. We don't need too much garlicky flavors. And next the queen herb that goes with tomatoes. If you aren't putting basil with tomatoes during the summertime, I'm sure you're doing something else pretty amazing. But <laughs> if you really want to experience the best thing in the world, <laughs> It's tomatoes and basil. So I'm going to just go ahead and just tear this up and a little bit of parsley. Adds a little bit dimension of flavor so it's not just basil. I'm gonna finely chop up the parsley. Final ingredients here. Italian liquid gold. Need about a fourth a cup. A little bit of balsamic, about one to two tablespoons. Also, if you have red wine vinegar, that would also be amazing in this. Just some other vinegary goodness. This is gonna sound a little bit strange. Drizzle, tiny, tiny drizzle of honey just to balance the flavors. I'm not trying to make this sweet. I don't want to taste the honey. I just want to balance the flavors. We have a lot of acidity acidity going on. We have, you know, the saltiness of the olives, all those fresh herbs. We need a little something sweet. So just a little drizzle of honey. Toss this all together. It's so beautiful and colorful. And that's another thing with meal prep. I ask myself when I go to make my meal prep menu and think about it, I'm like, how many colors am I using? Because the more colors, the better it's gonna be. Okay, so the little bruschetta mixture, tapenade, salad combination is all done. It's time to heat up a pan, cook off the chicken, and then pull it all together. And that's a wrap. So we have concluded our little mini meal prep. It wasn't a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I kept it very simple. That's why I kind of called it lunch inspired because these are all super, super simple recipes, super simple ideas, but I hope you are inspired. I hope you try at least one, if not many of these recipe ideas. As always, I have shown you guys and will leave in the description all the different ways you can use every single recipe together, separately, different combinations, so you can have delicious, wholesome Mediterranean meals ready to go and enjoy and make your life easier and just all the above. <laughs> so anyways, we have our beautiful zucchini quiches, tarts. They look absolutely gorgeous. We have the wonderful, beautiful, golden, crispy fries. I've already taste tested. We have the super lemony, zingy, delicious sumac yogurt marinade, the amazing smoky lentil sauce slash dip. We have the juiciest, I kid you not, like the juices are running like this. This, these are, this is one of the best ways ever to prepare chicken. Mark my words, like it is just, so good. And lastly, the bruschetta on steroids with all the herbs, 
the layers of flavor and the addition of some olives because why not? <laughs> and that concludes all of the recipes for this video, for this meal prep. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, if you got any value out of this video, if you're looking forward to making any of these recipes, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can know when I upload. And once again, just thank you so much. I hope you create a very zestful day. Ciao.